Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Craig Shoemaker. It's Enlightened Up. You know what the deal is here. We're here to enlighten you up and have some fun, have some levity, have some laughter, have some inspiration, and make sure you download us and all that stuff. All those announcements, you know what to do. All right? It's podcasting. It's, it's YouTube. Spread the word. Tell people about it. Enjoy yourself. You're going to enjoy yourself today and also be inspired. That's what we have guests that not only are fun and funny, but they inspire. And uh, we have our guest, Anna David, is here. Have I already heard a ration of shit <laughs> of how far she drove I to get here? I could have given you more. You, could, you already started with, I was once here with San Diego. It's the exact opposite direction. I, that I'm shows t- you how good you are, Rand McNally. I consider myself <laughs> directionally dyslexic. You, it's com- literally Compo- that is dyslexic. I, oh, I know. It's the opposite direction. Before, I'm north and yeah. Before GPS, yeah. I literally would just get on the road and cry. I would print <laughs> out MapQuest, and then it wouldn't make sense. No, it was bad. I was meant for GPS. Well, you, you were meant for a city. I'll tell you that. You were meant for Uber. I was meant for Uber. Yeah. Do you have a car? Uh, yeah, I didn't Uber. Okay, well, a lot of people Uber here. here. Yeah, well, a lot of people Uber here. You're worth, you're worth the Uber. I I am worth, I'm worth, (laughs) I'm worth a limo, but uh, well, you didn't send one for you. Uh, You're worth a jet. But I haven't seen you in years, but I do pay attention to, I see all of your progress in the world. Well, you're this big author now. As a matter of fact, the other day I was sent these books by the Genius Network. Yes. And I'm going, uh, just going through them, you know, free books. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> I might read this. Scan, <laughs> scan it through it. Look, it says addiction, which always draws my attention. Sure. And it has your name. Yeah. You're the author. Yeah. So tell us how you are qualified to talk about addiction. Well, I have uh, I have a great deal of experience with like chopping up lines of white powder and <laughs> putting a straw and ingesting it into my nostril, but it's well, been a long time. Who doesn't have that? I mean, we are. How, how bad did it get? Do you have any stories of uh, oh, yeah. hitchhiking home from Alaska? My, you know, my my life got infinitely more interesting story wise once I got sober. But my, no, it was just really like dark and depressing. It was like me, cocaine, cats. My cats, also, the worst part was that the cats would knock over the mirror that the cocaine was on. Oh. So it's actually a terrible combo. I would sit there and um, try to write. I was trying to write a screenplay and TV specs, but I was writing TV specs for shows I'd never seen. <laughs> so I was like, what am I That's genius? where your imagination went when you're on coke. Yeah, and I, was, I wrote like a Dawson's Creek just to date myself. It was the late 90s. And, uh, and I just put all the characters on coke. That was the storyline. I mean, it was, it, I was absolutely insane. So I ended up getting sober November 19th of 2000. So it'll be 21 years. Wow. In November. It's a long yeah, time. A you get sober time. very young. Well, you're like nine. Nine. The way I'm I was looking 30. at it. Whoa. Okay, I'm doing the math. It's, it's 51. It's not equating here. Thank you so and, uh, much. You know what else doesn't equate? That you're in Hollywood and you just blurted out your age like it was nothing. Fuck it, I've given up. I don't even do that. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. a male. <laughs> I just, look, you know what I live for? I live for the what? The, the horror is when I say my age and people go, huh. Mm. Like, <laughs> like it's worth the ego rush I get. From oh, when you just saw my face when yeah. you said you were nine? Yeah, that yeah, That is, yeah. I guess that is worth it. Oh, it's pretty it. lovely. I've had the opposite effect. I tried going up. Like, I, I remember one time, I, I think you even know Bianca. I said to her, I said that I was like, uh, she, so it's your birthday. I said, yeah, I'm 70. I'm turning 70. And she went, oh, I thought you were like 68. I'm <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I exaggerated like 20 years. <laughs> and, and, and you said you thought I was two years younger than this exaggeration. The worst. Oh, it's that was worst. bad. That backfired. So I never did it again. I would never do that. That's way high risk. Also, I'm sort of at the stage in my life and my brain where it's just like, fuck it. Right, don't this care. This is who I am. Right. And if I lie about it or I feel ashamed about it, I'm saying there's something wrong with it. That's and there's a, that's nothing wrong with it. Great attitude. Now I'm going to read your book. I didn't read it, by the way. You know that it's that's on my nightstand. My that's ninth close. Book. I, I, I know. know you told me you did no research, so it's totally fine. You're a very prolific writer. I'm very prolific the writer. The research I do is paying attention to how many books you come out with. Well, I'm exhausted. But also, I can't, so, even, I can't it, even read. I'm so tired of how many you, you have out. I hear you. Uh, you know, 51 years on the planet, you've got a lot of time to write books, especially yeah, if you, So does everyone. I'm over 51, and I've, I've only wrote two books. So God, there you I go. I thought you were 70. You're like <laughs> 68. 68. 
Look at you. You should be a comedian. You have callbacks. Thank you're you. are like a natural comedian. Have I, you ever thought about that? Well, I am f- a funny person professionally are, yes. in a way. My books are terribly humorous. Not The Miracle Morning for Addiction Recovery, that one you got. That is one that I wrote with my mentor, Joe Polish. You're yes. going to speak at his event. Yeah. Um. So, okay. So, yeah. So, the, ba- the thing is, so my first book, Party Girl, I will tell you, uh, when people are hearing this, it has just been re-released. HarperCollins bought it in 2005, released it in 2007. That's when I interviewed you, when that came out. It, no. Yeah. It does not. I interviewed you about Party Girl I years ago in Hollywood. I have a better memory than you, because that was not 2005. That was like 2012. Anyway. It was, yes, it okay. was. But we talked about Party Girl. I'm but sure. Ahead. I okay. never stopped talking about it, because the yeah. truth is, nine books, that's the best one I ever wrote. The first one. Yes. That's amazing. Well, that was that was meant to be... Except released from inside of you. Everything got fucked up. Am I allowed to swear? Well, you already have five times. <laughs> Twice. You no. do exaggerate. No, okay. I don't. No, I, I t- oh, geez. This is one of these things. I always wished with anyone I've ever been with yeah. that we could go back to recording. Like we go, oh, let's go to the videotape. You're like one of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could do it for you. As a matter of fact, we when you see this you on YouTube. You can go back to recording. That's the miracle of well, recording. Th- but no, when you see it on YouTube, we're going to show how many times we're going to have a little counter. I just remembered a third time. <laughs> I'm serious, not five. Anyway, anyway, um, everything got screwed up. Okay, uh, my publisher five. was hot, fired. Everything was a disaster. So they paid me a lot of money. It was supposed to be this big deal, and it all just like fell apart. So it, and and I hated the cover, and I hated the experience, and I always it always broke my heart that this thing I knew was really good got very much ignored. There was a bidding war over the film rights. There was tons of press. No books sold. Because press doesn't sell books. Film bidding wars doesn't sell books. It's getting books back then in bookstores is what sold support from the publisher. There was no publisher anymore. Judith Regan had been fired. So wow. so anyway, then That's I... That's why you're re-releasing it. Yes. Now yeah. I have a publishing house. So I'm you re- own the publishing house? I started it, yeah. Oh, my. That's awesome. What it is, it's called La- Legacy Launchpad. I started it three years ago under the mentorship of Joe Polish. Without that man, I would not. Genius know, Network. Genius Network. My company's yeah. probably, it's on like the road to get to making seven figures this year. It's crazy. Do you pay, do you pay that, uh, that, that retainer to him? Uh, no. To be in the Genius Network, it costs a certain amount of money. I, I was invited the other day. I'm going, huh, oh, nice invitation for 25 grand. <laughs> I know. Well, he's got two groups. The other one's 100 grand. No, is it really? Yeah. I guess he doesn't. Think I'm worthy of the of the hundred thousand? Well, maybe if you said yes so readily to twenty five, which you didn't, he'd be like, "Oh, well, do you want hundred one?" <laughs> um, th- I am not in the Genius Network, but I am, you know, a good friend of the network. Let's just say. Oh, okay. And I, I've spoken at the annual event. And, and he and also wrote the book with you. Is that correct? S- yes. So, so we were given the opportunity to write a Miracle Morning book. It's this series by Hel Elrod member of the Genius Network. Mm-hmm. He wrote this book called The Miracle Morning. You would love this book. It's like mm-hmm. all about, you know, how to start your day right. How is this love amazing it. person? So there's the, it's kind of like chicken soup for the soul. It's, you know, there's Miracle Morning for entrepreneurs. I'm sure there's Miracle Morning for comedians. Mm-hmm. Oh, you should write that. So Joe and I together wrote The Miracle Morning for Addiction Recovery. Oh, got it. Yes. That's a great idea. Yes. I actually talked to Mark Victor Hansen about being one of the exactly. chicken soup for the souls, which we were headed down that direction. I'm going to take it over to your direction because I have a couple of those books in yeah, me, it's, ready to go. It's a, it's a great business. I'd love to have a book that's like, you right. know, you can go sell the option for people to write them. Mark Mark and yeah. Mark and uh, Jack Canfield, they, they, they cornered claim, the market. Yeah. They claim that it's the second selling book to the Bible. It's probably Chicken true. Soup. It probably is true. It probably it might be. is. Yeah. But I mean, it, so writing books, people don't realize the other thing it does is it gives you credibility Absolutely. if you're speaking. Well, so that's what my business model is. Yeah. Entrepreneurs pay my company to write and publish the book. So I have a team of writers. We do all the publishing. We get it distributed to like 40,000 outlets. Wow. And, you know, cover design, layout, copy edit, all the things. And so they keep all the proceeds, but people don't make money from books. You make, you don't make money from book sales. You make money from the business you can build from that book. So maybe that's speaking gigs. That you leave behind. Yeah. And it's like for yeah. someone like me, I wrote a book called Make Your Mess Your Memoir last year that's really all about how to take your life story and make it into a book that can give you a career. That I probably made $4,000 from book sales. I brought in hundreds of thousands of dollars of new business from people who read that book. And, so, and do you speak? Do you actually go out and speak? I 
do. I, you know, not you're as much anymore. You're hesitating on that. You no, I, I mean, they don't exactly, like, hire me enough for that shit. Well, probably because you don't try to be hired. I do. I do. I have a speaking agent. You do? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But they're not that active. It's a college speaking agent. Okay. College. That's is, not your jam. It's not. It's much better for comedians. I was going to talk about addiction recovery. It's and not good for comedians. Oh, it's not. It's you not good for You didn't hear the anyone. Seinfeld canceled doing colleges. So did Chris Rock. Colleges are the worst these days. They're entitled. I hate to generalize, but they're yeah. entitled. Cancel culture, virtue signaling people yeah. that don't have a sense of self and therefore don't have a sense of humor. Sorry, college kids, if you're listening, but you might want to listen to the... You might um, want to take that in. You might want to take that in and think, am I entitled? Am I really cancel culturally? Uh, you know, it's just ridiculous what's going on right now. So colleges is not the market. It's usually the market of uh, 25 and up who are ready to transform and evolve. Am I right about that? Is that your avatar? Um, n- well, my clients are usually men in their late 40s and 50s. That is that is my avatar in terms of who my client is. So mm. I'm speaking, I actually have three speaking things lined up for the fall. I'm going to a mastermind in Tulum. That's the kind of speaking gig I want. Yeah. Where they're all people who could, you know, become my clients. I'm speaking at EO, you know, Entrepreneurs Organization in Detroit. So mm. it's things like that. Yeah, that I do. But, so you're not there for a speaking gig like... I am I'm, I'm talking paid. about big pay. It's not big pay, but somebody, I get paid. Somebody just asked me, by the way. How much you make? No, no. Somebody asked me to speak for them. You know, I have a, a, a hell of a resume. You know, you do. And, and like, you know, been around a while, done everything, and spoken in front of 75,000 people at once. Yeah. I, you know, I got this resume. And they're going, they haggled with me. Over? Over, like, a, a small amount of money, yeah. which I had agreed to, yeah. right? And then they come back to me and they said, well, we're going to go a different direction. I was like, after you haggled with me, I said, it, it just so, felt, don't you feel disrespected sometimes? I mean, when people. Well, absolutely. What I have learned running this business is that the people who just say, oh, your, your service costs $100,000, they're usually delightful to work with. It's the people that are like, can oh. you give it to me for $10 oh, oh, yeah. that are the people that complain. I, I. I'm completely with you, especially these days. I have these high-end clients that are awesome. I teach them how to alchemize humor and turn it into gold, you know, how they can be funnier and how it works in life. The ones who are already coached by really high-level people, they're they're all in. Like, what can I pay? Because they want an edge. Yep. The ones who come to you and try to haggle, it's no irony that they're failing. I know. At so many things. I know. So that's why Genius Network is saying, pay me $25,000 because they're saying, Hey, this is going to come back in spades, and that's what you're pretty well, much. Well, as Joe says, when people pay, they pay attention. Oh, I like that line. He's got a lot of them. I'm going to use that line. Yeah, go <laughs> is ahead. it his? It's yeah, probably not. Yeah, he probably trademarked it. Oh, there's no know. way. No. There's no way. All, a lot of these books, that's what they do. They take Dale Carnegie or Napoleon Hill, and they just like retitle it and kind of shine it up, you know, and make it modern day. I like to think that I'm completely original because no one is doing that. No one's doing the humor thing. Um, how important it is to have a sense of humor, how important it is to develop your own sense of self and sense of humor. I do know two guys who do. do who coach uh, entrepreneurs on how to do that. No, who are they? I'm sure they're not as funny as you. No. <laughs> or as accomplished. Certainly not as accomplished. Well, no, I mean, that, that's the... They're uh, not. That, there's no way they could First be, all, or I know them. they're not 70 years old, so they haven't <laughs> had as that's, much experience. That's a third callback. That's three fucks and three callbacks to my age. Uh, now oh. she's going to go, no, it was only two. No, so. no, it was... The, uh, I think it was only two. Um, but, yeah. You're too smart. How's your relationships? Do you have any... Are you in a relationship? I am. What kind? Like, um, is it... Th- three how many years. years? That's a long moving time. moving in. Oh, that's big. I'm finally letting him move in. I'm letting him move in. That sounded very metaphoric, but, no, it, but it's not. It's not. It's not. But he no. really is, though. It is, it is metaphoric, too, is it's like moving into your soul, right? It is. I will tell you, it took a very long time to be uh, relationship material. It wasn't that I wasn't meeting guys who were. It was that I wasn't. And wow. I wasn't meeting men who were. Um, oh, but they're just a reflection of you. That's absolutely. what you're basically saying to begin with. Is absolutely. like You were not ready for... To invite in someone of your caliber, yeah. of your level, of your and energy. By the way, it's the exact same thing that we were saying about payment. Like, the lower my standards went, the worse I was treated. Sure. You know? And the more money he paid you, the more. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, so uh, describe this person. How did you meet this person? I met him on Raya, which is a dating app. Oh, 
Oh, you yeah. went that way. I went that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you? What were you looking for when you were looking for the the, the dating qualities in not, someone? I was not looking for him. Interestingly, I my whole dating life, I have been with men who are super like life of the party. Um, <laughs> you know, frankly, men. This, I was just saying this to a friend. Men who are undateable. I too was undateable. Mm-hmm. I've just done such a tremendous amount of work on myself yeah. that I became dateable. But I would date men like me. Yeah. And they life of the party. They could have had the the sequel. Yes, right. exactly. Party right. boy. Party boy. And um, Jim is. He's a cancer. He's super introverted. He um, is just nothing really like them. And so it took me a while to realize that was exactly what I needed was like the yin to my yang. Yeah. I didn't know that. Now, have you written a book about this? This sounds like a discovery. Oh, I see Not you yet. looking up in the air. Like, uh, Not there's a, yet. There's a spark because this is something to share. Yeah. Many people. Now, your avatar is going to change the women because a lot of women are wondering this How podcast that is that is that meaningful that it will change my entire avatar? I like that confidence. It, it, it could be. Yeah. It, it could be. Well, it's not the podcast. It was you who came up with it. True. So the podcast just helped you manifest this this thing that's going to come out of you. I watched your eye go into the air. Well, on I, that thought, I go, well, that's probably something you had thought about before. And then you no. think that just gets confirmed once again. That's probably the next book that wants to be revealed out of you. I'll tell you something. As somebody who, this is answering your question in a roundabout way, I, I, as a writer writing books for HarperCollins, I made no money. And I was incredibly discouraged. And it's not really about the money. It was about, I put my heart and soul into this thing and, and no one cares. And then I learned, I met Joe, I, met the, I got to know these Genius Network people, and I learned how to build it, an incredibly successful business. Mm. So... I am now a very practical person. I, you know, I practice what I preach. I don't think it makes sense to write a book that isn't going to help your business. That's, I'm just not interested in doing I thought you were going with, that's not going to help people. (laughs) Or is it both? But I mean. Don't you want to write a book that helps people as well? Is that a motivation? I think all my books have helped people. Absolutely. Correct. And when you looked in the air, you said, I should write a book about this. or, Or we thought about that. I think you would be helping people that's, I, I do. that are also longing to find a relationship that they connect with, who they can move in <laughs> at some point, move right? In. Move um, in. I um, Absolutely. It's just not what I do. I don't do relationship coaching. That's Ironically, not- I did. I, uh, you I did relationship coach, even I, though you couldn't coach yourself. Isn't that ironic? Well, it's I not it's ironic. True. It's all very common. Yeah. Therapists are usually the ones that need the therapy. I, when I was, um, when I, just when I got sober, I got this opportunity to write a story for Playboy magazine. I, this seems like something you would know, even if you did no research on me. And <laughs> they, the sto- the, when I met with the editors, they said, we, can we shoot you? So I'm not naked, but I'm. Very scantily clad. I'm wearing just underwear. There's a lot you can't see. Oh, I see. know why you're surprised because I didn't do that research. Yeah. I, I will. I, I literally am going to end the podcast. No, you can't. Can it's, somebody bring in? Bring it's in not that online. I was Gordon, in, come on. Be quick with this. I was in two issues, and both of them are actually collector's editions because it was Pamela Anderson's first and then Carmen Electra's first. That meant a lot back There you then. go, Gordon. Put it up on the screen. So, no, no. You can't find it anywhere. That's how Playboy is. They're, they're very good at protecting that stuff. So... When that story came out, which was, I think, like 2002, 2003, it became a huge deal. It was optioned. It was made into a reality show pilot. I was the producer of that. And I, suddenly I started getting all these calls to, like, will you come on and give sex advice? Will you come on and give relationship advice? All these things. So I started going on the Today Show and the talk and all these shows. And I got hired on a show called Attack of the Show, which has like had like a huge cult following. Sure, I remember that. With Olivia yeah. Munn. So she and I used to have this se- segment of sex and relationship mm-hmm. advice. And I felt terrible about myself as I was doing it because my relationship life was a disaster. Hmm. Well, advice is one thing. And I'm sure you can relate to this. A big turnaround in my career in life was, which I learned by getting sober, is you don't give advice. You share yeah. your experience. Yep. When you share... People aren't being forced in anything because yeah. you know they're sitting there going, what does this person know? Well, you know your life. Yeah. That's what you know. Exactly. And if somebody relates to that, it can help them because now they say, oh, you survived that. You went through that or you had success in that. You had failure in that. That's what they're thinking when they're listening to you. Absolutely. So That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're doing. So 
as I said, I'm back to your book. I want to be your muse. <laughs> Get this book out of you. So You're sharing something. Let me just tell you something as a receiver of what you just said. And I'm not kidding when I tell you this. And I, and I don't know. You don't know this, but I see clients. I'm a psychic. I'm literally a psychic. Mm-hmm. So my psychic sense literally went to, I first saw you look up in the air, and it was mm-hmm. like something happened. And it gave me like a little bit of boost, like an energy boost. I said to myself, oh, this is something that is really important to you to share to people that you come from what you just described and now you're on the other side, just like if you're sharing at a, you know, if you went to AA, you know, <laughs> you would share your experience, strength, and your hope. Absolutely. Here's your hope is moving in with you, literally. Yeah. That's the end of the book that we want to see. It's true. That can help people. It, absolutely. I actually people know. People suffer by, by not finding a partner. I was one of them. <laughs> right? So to oh, let people it know. It was torturous. But, like, I will tell you what, what in, I can say in retrospect is that it was less about the partner and more about the oh my god I'm gonna be alone forever what's wrong with me this the you know the Buddhists call it um, the second arrow where you know you have the feeling and then you shame yourself for the feeling so the feeling was I really want to meet someone and then the the second arrow was there's something wrong with me because I haven't because society will tell you that if you are a woman in your forties and you have never been married. You will get the message over and over again that there's the something stigma, wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. That, Which is so weird when you're seeing someone. This is why, again, I encourage you to move forward with this. Yes. I'm your publisher now. Thank you. Uh, if people were watching this, this will get them to watch YouTube instead of just listening. You are like ridiculously attractive, like like a full on beauty, really smart, have all the goods, and here you are. Desperately lonely for twenty years. That is, see, to somebody like on the outside, that is nuts. And yet, it was true. I've been in Hollywood a long time, and yeah. the biggest starlets yeah. are the loneliest. I know them. You know them. Yeah. How lonely are they until they find their way? And yeah. Until they find there has to be a shift that takes place. Do you know? Can you identify that shift besides going on a dating site? <laughs> well, I do think there's something to, um, and people used to always say this to me: date against your type. And I was like, nah, like, but I mean, in the end, that was ex- my experience. Mm-hmm. He's really hot, so it was nah. like <laughs> it wasn't like I was, you know, I was being shallow at first. Right, right. But but I think and stick through the, you know, I, and honestly, like at first, I wasn't sure. Uh, and, and here was the thing: I am an addict through and through. I may be sober almost twenty one years, but I am an addict through and through. And I was using dating and relationships to get high. I preferred the the high, even though the low would leave me like curled up in the fetal position wanting to die. Right. That high was so good. And what I think the high comes from, I was talking to Sponsi about this the other day. It's like my brain would say, This is the most important man in the world, which was a lie. Usually he was not great at all. You knew him ten minutes. I knew him ten minutes. Yeah. There was nothing great about him. But my brain had assigned him that yeah, role. Yeah. And so I was actually having the appropriate response to feeling the love. You're getting of the a most dopamine op- hit and, from this and, illusion. And it it it's not what love is about. And it feels like it is. Mm-hmm. It super feels like it is. Yeah. And and I think unfortunately f- for my experience is that I couldn't just make a decision to not be like that. I had to have the heartbreak of all heartbreaks, then go into trauma therapy, then be like, well, who the hell knows, and then meet this wonderful guy. Mm. That was my experience. Yeah. What's, what kind of surrenders did you make? It really does take surrenders. It's a seri- we're in a series of surrenders, in my opinion, not yeah. a series. Of, that's where the victory takes place. That's the irony. Absolutely. It is the irony. Yeah. And <laughs> we're you all know, about But it's like if we could coin the, the formula to surrender yeah. – We'd be even more successful than we are. Oh, no, I've got it. I just haven't shared it yet. <laughs> Tell me. Tell us. No, because it's like, you know, when I see people with, you know, I was talking to a newcomer on the way over here. It's like on the 300-mile dri- drive over here. And, 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 and You suck. And it's like, what is that I take thing? back everything I said. <laughs> That's like, so nice. You're going to just keep rubbing that in how far you went. I'm going to literally Venmo you gas money. That's how bad it is. You are talking to the king of guilt. The king of guilt. I will run with this 
Till the next Look, 10 years I when we see each other again. I enjoyed a road trip today. I <laughs> it's called a road trip. <laughs> oh, no. but, it's a road trip. But here, Craig. I got to change my studio location. You've been, so I like your, this new book idea. But I will tell you, my next book is actually going to be about reinvention, which is very similar. Yes. Which is about the idea that we must uh, reinvent ourselves. Correct. Probably every seven years. But the, what I call happens, it a spiritual rebooty call. I like it. That's what it's called for me. I like because it. Because it all does boil down to spirit, right? It, uh, it, yes. Your true essence. That's what it always boils down to. That book that's inside of you, the second one that's coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's just nothing but your connection with spirit. Mm -hmm. that, it's pure. That's where the surrender takes place to create that flow, that natural flow that's inside all of us. Yeah. Happens to be you're at a little bit of upper level of it. So how does someone do that? Well, there are many ways. You have to go to my coaching session and pay yeah. a lot of money to hear it. I'll give it to you for nothing, just for coming out here. If it will absolve me of my guilt, I will I coach you. It, I don't think it will. <laughs> Alas. You're terrible. Alas. That book sitting next to you, by the way, that's, that's a lot about surrender. Yeah. I took somebody who reached out to me on Facebook, private message. And again, my instincts, my whatever you want to call it, energy or Psychic sense took over, and I said, this woman's in pain. Yeah. And the, the book is our conversation on private message over a year on Facebook, helping her through a divorce. And she didn't have to pay you a lot of money. That was She just, paid me zero. Yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah, and, that's, and the book ends with, I had an instinct that she should meet somebody, you know, who's a different type of person. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, I, um, I had something to do with it, though. I fixed her up <laughs> 3,000 miles away. I didn't even know her that well. And uh, Is she married to him? Yeah, five years. Love it. I mean, and they're madly in love. It's awesome to see. It's really, uh, it's if, so what I'm saying to you is, if that can inspire you into having an understanding, like you can do that for people by sharing your victories yeah. from your surrender. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I do it, you know, in in 12-step programs. Sure, you know, of course day. you do, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, like I said, if I could have the formula, here's the thing that I, I think about this a lot because I'm friends with a lot of those Genius Network guys and a lot of them write books about here's how you do this and here's how you do right, that. And, right. and, and I don't know if it's being a woman or, or what it is, but I don't have enough to put in a book about here's what you do. I don't have enough yeah, to do. tell people. You do. But I, but I don't even think that would be interesting. You've already done it here for 30 minutes. It, it, take the parts out about how far you came. <laughs> so <laughs> about the swearing. I like, I, like to, I like to know how far you've come in life Brilliant. as opposed to your drive today. Brilliant oh, metaphor. That yes. is, <laughs> this is what, but you have so much in you. That's what I do encourage people is, is, Basically, it's just revealing once you get the stuff out of the way, the yeah. fears, the doubts, the worries, all the anxieties, whatever it is. Once you do that, we are all this great potential. This po so it's just revealing your potential. It's already in there. That book is already in you. It is. I, I just find it more interesting to share through anecdotes and um, – Rather than, like, it's kind of like what you were saying about yeah. experience rather than exactly. here's what you do. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying is in you. You have a lot of experience. A lot of experience. And a lot of failures. A lot of which failures. Which is fantastic. I've been fired from every job I've ever had. Oh, my God. I thought it was a, it was like I wasn't sober thing. Happened all through sobriety, too. Of course it did, because it's the same person, yeah. you know, yeah. until you, until you evolve. I asked you no, about I that point. I still think yeah. I would be fired if I had a boss. <laughs> today. Now, it. tell me about your book now. The book now that I can read. That I brought for you. It's right. And you actually will enjoy it. I have it. Oh, it's, it's on my bed stand. No, you don't. That's you why you're the, here today. You have the Miracle Morning. You're yes, I do. Party Girl. Frankly, you'll like Party Girl more. Oh, because it's your party days. Yeah. Are there pictures? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there are not pictures in novels. <laughs> But oh, it's a novel? It's a novel. It's supposedly someone else, isn't it? They call it a Romana Clay when it's really you. Yeah, it's Sex in the City. Yeah. It's like, so like Candace, what's it, Bushnell? Bushnell. Yeah. So, yeah, is, isn't this cover gorgeous? It is a gorgeous it's, cover. Uh, Show I it love to the it camera. so much. So Party the covers Girl. that Harper is that Collins a, is did. Is that a new cover or is that the cover. one they used My before? designer did it. Oh, uh, at your company? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So if anyone's writing a book... They would come to you. You don't want that many. No, people. No, 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 no. What yeah. we do is so specialized. It's for like seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, which I'm sure they all listen to your show. I'm not saying they don't. Yeah, a lot of them do. Yeah. Who 
who don't want to write a book, who want my team to write that book and publish it. Very, very specific audience. Actually, actually, that is a lot of part of my audience. My last two clients came from a billionaire coach. Great. Who coaches people, and he's a billionaire. He's the top of his I'll field. Take those they came from, yeah. from, from him. Yeah. Because they needed their kn- funding. Yeah. And they also, that's exactly right. That's the key to the edge. This is also something I want to encourage you. You are freaking funny. Now, I know this book is also funny, right? Hilarious. There you go. That's Hilarious. the kind of book I'm going to read that ahead of your addiction book. I got the addiction yeah. thing down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By the way, speaking of that, you mentioned 12 steps. Don't you think the world, the world could just use something as, as like profound and beautifully and yet written? basic, yeah. Basic, exactly. But there's not a single loophole, not a single, and I've checked, yeah. <laughs> I've investigated. In the 12-step recovery program, for whatever it is, love addiction, so they're all the same. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. That's the thing is everyone in the world could use it. The problem is. What's the problem? Who would be willing to do this stuff that sounds outrageous unless you were at your bottom? I wouldn't have been. If you, unless you're at your bottom. Yeah. Like I Don't was you so think we're at our bottom, Anna? Oh, the nadir of society? This is awful. It's, it's, it, it's horrible. I'm hoping, I'm praying for people to find their bottom. I don't want to be a part of it. I'll stay in my house. But find your damn bottom. Well, I think it's all tra- anger. It's all trauma. Of course it's it is. unresolved trauma. But we can deal with our trauma if you deal with it in a spiritual way, in a self-inventory way, in a way of connection with fellowship. All the things that are there yeah. in the, you know, Bill wrote, yeah. Bill Wilson wrote it, and it's evolved. Mm-hmm. It's all there for everyone. Everyone should try that. Just fill in the blank if you don't even want to admit you're something yeah. Just call yourself a fnifna. You're in a fnifna nun, whatever it is. You right. know what I mean? Right. Because it's it's there's no there's no leaders. You're just servants. You know what I mean? It, you don't. It's anonymous. Yeah. I mean, what a wonderful way to live, right? Yeah, I have found that I I have needed what they call outside help. I did need to do trauma therapy, specific trauma therapy, to deal with my experience. I got as a it. Kid. But what led you there was this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, I do extra. I mean, I do. Zen work on the weekend, on Sundays, you know, I'm in a Zen group. I mean, I, I, I met my wife at uh, this Agape Spiritual Center. Oh, Agape, that's Yeah, awesome. of course. I mean, this is yeah. where, you know, because the basis of it is spirituality. Yeah. That's what's missing. Everyone's got the, everyone's got the answer for everyone, and they'll cancel you if they don't think it's their answer, and they don't want to hear it, then they'll censor you. That's what's going on right now, that's and there's horrible. anger, misplaced rage. I know. So allegedly, if you did the 12 steps... You're dealing with those resentments because that's what causes you to act out. Yeah, I, I, a thousand percent. It's just the the denial is so intense, and I think with a lot of what's going on right now, people make a statement and then they just, uh, even as evidence that they're wrong starts to present itself, they just dig their heels in further. Oh yeah, you know righteousness, self righteousness. I have a guy's argue with me on text. I said, "Don't text me anymore if you're just going to put me to a link." He puts me to Someone links. Someone you know. Oh, yeah, I know him well. He won't stop texting me because, because I'm, uh, you know, I have a certain position on something because I am a major researcher, except yeah. for your bio. <laughs> <laughs> I love research. Unless it involves when, Playboy. When, well, then you're it, like, no. Now I'm, I'm trying to research no. that now. But he will not stop sending me links. I said, where do you think the links come from? They come from profiteers. That's how they own the links. They own your mind. And that's why I try to encourage people is stop, take a pause, take a sacred pause for your own good and get into your own health because it's all there, just like your book. What a, yeah. way, to cl- what a way to close it what out. What a way to end. <laughs> I could have you on forever, but this was last second. As a matter of fact, you know, because you came so far and have rubbed so it in, far. other people come further, but never rub it in. I am going to bump your podcast up ahead of all of the famous people I have here. We have one coming in right now. He's he's waiting. Oh, we don't let famous people wait. Okay, we have to stop. <laughs> we do. You're so good at this. You know that. Thank you so much. This uh, was you're really, the best. really it was so fun. good to see you. But I really, I'd love to hang with you and your your man and, you know, just... Double to, date. What, we could double date. If Except I, he's an introvert. That's okay. You're, uh, you're my wife is too. Oh, okay. Great. Oh, 100%. Yeah. She's coming out of it, though. She's actually coaching as well, but... Uh, no, no, big time. Like, she's, that would that'd be really funny. I have a funny, okay, this is what we'll do. We have to go. We're going to go on a double date. Okay. And we'll make a little pact. Yeah. He's not, he's not watching this anyway. That we'll be silent 
and let them and let them if it's possible let them do guide the conversation it's not possible. What's that? Not possible. I don't know how to do that. I don't either. Yeah. It's like you, you just you have to like get uncomfortable and you have to fill the room. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you're one of those? Oh, yeah. We would have made a horrible couple. Yeah. So yeah, because you're supposed to so let's try it though. Okay. As our own exercise. We show up, a couple little exchanges, and then just let them take it over and see if we sit he in silence. He would not know what to do <laughs> if I didn't speak. He literally would like call a doctor. <laughs> we'll have a part two to this, a follow up okay, to this. It's okay. a great play it's a great and does we'll it, and we'll write, we'll write a book about it we'll write a book and we'll co-author a book about it okay I like it. introvert extrovert all right anna how do we find you and how do we find your book so i'm on you know all the social platforms anna b david but the book uh, the best website is party girl oh, you can see nice. all the stuff i love it okay hopefully People, all my people are going to, you know, entrepreneurs and everybody else, they're all going to buy your book. I we'll hope they buy do. The book. You're very inspirational. It's so great to see you again. It's been too many years, but we're going to make sure we take care of that with a dinner with introvert, extrovert, extrovert. We'll get back to you with that. I hope you had a wonderful time on today's show. And remember, spread the word about us, spread the word about Anna, us. We're all in this together, okay? It's humanity. We're together. We're unified. We are all one. Just remember that we are all one. We all think the same, feel the same. Uh, and carry the same issues about how far you have to drive to go see someone. Anyway, uh, I love you all, and make sure you have levity, levity and light, plenty of that in your life. And remember one thing I always say is enlighten the fuck up, all right? See you next time. <laughs>